I think we can start. So good morning, everyone, and welcome to FIBON Morning Talks, our monthly webinar on uh, latest topics on, on angel investing and early stage investing. My name is Tuulis Aukkonen. I'm uh, working here at FIBAN as communications trainee and, and hosting us this morning. Uh, without any further ado, we could take a little look at, at our program. So I have here with me Saga Fors. Hi everyone, good morning. Discuss, and we're discussing about uh, diversity and inclusion. And, and after our discussion, there is uh, room for a Q&A session. So hope hope this will raise questions. But Saga, so, uh, you are an experienced angel investor, many uh, portfolio companies and successful exits as well. Could you introduce yourself? Of course, thank you. And uh, great to be here. Um, my name is uh, Saga Fors, and uh, uh, in addition to being a business angel, I've been doing a lot of other things <laughs> as well. But just as a short uh, introduction, my background is in financing. I've been doing uh, mergers and acquisitions for the last 20 years, basically. I think even more, 21. And uh, uh, I started my, my career, I would say, I'm of course a business angel, but I'm, uh, I'm also an entrepreneur. I would say, and my first company I started in uh, 2004, and then in 2005 was the second one, which was the uh, corporate finance boutique called uh, Broadus Partners, and I still do work there with M&As. But uh, since 2008, I started with investing, and I did not understand being a business angel, so I was just an entrepreneur. Uh, so um, we started out with a bakery and then I continued with smoothies and then I became quite excited with all kind of interesting ideas. I'm uh, curious uh, by nature. So I also invested in companies I did not perhaps quite understand in the beginning, but slowly started to understand them. And today I have about, uh, so in addition to uh, food and food concept companies. I do also have some technology companies, medtech companies in my portfolio, and even one which is focusing in uh, oil and gas technologies. So quite diversified sector-wise. Indeed. And there we can uh, go further to our topic, so diversity and inclusion. And, and uh, our first exercise, actually, for everyone online as well. So now, uh, as a warm up, uh, we want to ask you what does diversity and inclusion mean to you? And now you can click to the link there, so www.menti.com and log in with the code 168824. And, and there you can see the question that is, what does diversity and inclusion mean to you? So any kind of associations uh, that, that come into your mind and you see the code still there in the, in the header and probably someone can add it to the chat as well. And while we wait for your uh, answers, Saga, what does diversity and inclusion mean? Yeah. It's, uh, first of all, I, I uh, think it's a very, very important uh, uh, subject, diversity and inclusion, and it's not that easy. And uh, to my experience and experience of myself, basically, is that you have to be consciously thinking about diversity and inclusion in order to be able to diversify mm -hmm. and include. So uh, for me, it means that uh, uh, those that you work are not not necessarily your close friends because that is your private life but when you work you also need to ensure that you have different kinds of people and uh, it's not only uh, that they they have different uh, um, nationalities but uh, also that they might be extrovert introvert mm -hmm. uh, and uh, of course different background workplace and uh, both men and women, so both genders are usually, I believe, the successful 
way of working. Hmm. And I think that's also what the study, yeah, the studies say. And now, when we take a look on the screen, we have their oh, opportunities, indeed, uh, equality, foreigners. I think in Finland we still say that we have some lack of of international talent coming. Yeah. I agree. I, I, I think that is a, a very, very important uh, a discussion and a very important subject. And uh, especially if you compare Finland with, uh, well, let's say uh, Sweden or, or Germany, uh, we do, we, most of us now, I don't know the percentages, but I would guess about 85 to 90 percent are. Uh, uh, Finnish born in Finland. Uh, we do have some for foreigners, but, but we don't have enough of them, which means that if you are looking for a certain uh, background or a certain uh, education, you don't have that many to choose from. So um, I, I think that in order to, to get more dynamics mm -hmm. in the Finnish economy, we would need more people from different backgrounds. And it's not only for our own market, but I believe that countries uh, which have um, people from different kind of cultures are also successful in exports. Mm, true. And uh, yeah, great point. Let's see what we have there: uh, gender differences, respect, richness, complementing, indeed, acceptance, joy, different views, pride, empathy. Great words. I I think uh, this uh, picture as well. The, the whole. I I actually like very much the word joy because right. I never thought about putting in the word joy, but that, that yeah. that's actually what it is. Sure. And when you when, when when you hear different opinions, you hear different stories, you get different ideas. You you, especially if you're a curious person, then you kind of feel joy when you hear something new. That's that's true indeed. So it's not only about the benefits, but also like the pure pure joy of different people around. All right. So to enter more deeply to our our topic uh, with diversity and inclusion, we of course, um, well, it's a vast topic and might be kind of. Uh, impossible to cover thoroughly in our 20 minutes uh, discussion, but in, in general, we've referred to cognitive and demographic differences, for instance, uh, our, our professional backgrounds, but also gender, age, might be one, ethnical di diversity, ethnical backgrounds. Uh, and as said, there are studies that highlight the benefits of, of having di diversity. And for instance, I actually just came across a McKinsey study that told that um, gender diverse teams mm -hmm. more likely to overperform. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's there's a lot of uh, discussion on it. But today we're uh, especially inter interested in angel investors mm -hmm. point of view. So Saga, what kind of diversity do you have in your own portfolios or for teams? I, I really did start thinking about that and um, uh, it's a good question, and um, I would say that it, uh, in my uh, portfolio companies there are different kinds of uh, diversity, and the ones that come into to my mind is uh, perhaps the my latest investment, which is a Swedish company in uh, Göteborg, and uh, I uh, syndicated with a Swedish business angel, a, a, a woman as well. So uh, basically, it's it's not often you have. You know the syndicating angel is is a female, and uh, the founder of the company is originally from India, and he moved to Göteborg to to do his PhD, and then he started his company. Uh, the team he's um, well he's not that old <laughs> compared to myself, but but he's um, he's still like mid middle aged, and his team is quite young. And then as usual, we investors are. Uh, are a little bit older so if you think about it you have all those aspects you have the age you have the gender equality or, or diversification and you have the international team 
then this is this is like what I want to talk about uh, or or tell everyone about. But of course, I have to admit, as this is not a very easy question, I do have uh, also uh, portfolio companies where we are all Swedish speaking Finns, uh, and even the the um, uh, the management is Swedish speaking Finns. So. Um, again is an example of not very diversified <laughs> uh, company however uh, the good thing is that that at least uh, on a gender level we are quite true. quite equal true, true. And, and yeah interesting that that, that company was also in sweden based in sweden uh, so yeah. very diverse one exactly <laughs> and, 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 and and that 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 because i started to I do. Uh, I'm. I'm also uh, an investor in one Finnish company, which is um, kind of diverse. Uh, at least uh, we have in the management. We have a managing director and, and uh, one of the largest owners. Uh, he's from Sweden, and then you have the development team, the R and D team. Uh, they are from Finland. Uh, but otherwise, I suppose I'm the only female investor, <laughs> and so. Right. So at least small steps. True, true, indeed. Uh, then, uh, what is your experience? How how do diverse boards, advisory boards, and syndicates uh, benefit the startup? I, I uh, if if you think of uh, background, and uh, I have uh, consciously started uh, to at least when you syndicate, mm -hmm. you you really need to think about the background and make sure that you don't have a lot of uh, uh, business people only uh, or lawyers <laughs> for that matter uh, you also you 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 need to have uh, background and the knowledge from different areas of the economy mm -hmm. uh, of course i think this is a rule that everyone who makes investments makes sure that you have the engineer you have the marketing and sales you have the networking mm -hmm. so so in that one, I suppose, is quite consciously uh, done. Then again, uh, if you think about the international experience and people from different cultures and languages, um, it's difficult because, uh, to be quite honest, I, I know, for example, in Fibam, we have a few who are either Swedes or perhaps Estonians, Russians even, but. Uh, that's about it. One American, mm. Mm. but but it's not very many. Mm. So so also in in Fiban, I I think in order to for us angels to be able to syndicate different um, backgrounds, you know, when we're investing. I uh, perhaps we should also focus on on getting on board. Definitely, Definitely. That's, that's a great point kind of view to develop further. Mm. Um, then again, if we look at your portfolio startups, mm -hmm. um, well, you also already told a bit, but to go more into specific, uh, how is diversity and inclusion incorporated there? And how do you think that it has helped your companies to scale? Mm, uh, I believe that, diver I think in, in this case, it's important or, or inclusion is even a more important mm -hmm. word. Uh, inclusion, in in uh, in my view, includes that that you treat everyone as an equal, regardless if, if you are, you know, the managing director or 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 the cleaner. Of course, you do have different tasks, but all of us are persons, and uh, all of us needs respect, and uh, everyone has to be, you know, talked to and heard. So. Um, I believe in in uh, in uh, uh, my com portfolio companies. Of course, they are pretty small, but that you you, you don't have very hierarchic uh, structures. You have pretty lean organization, and I believe you. If people dare to to uh, tell their opinion, I believe you get the company further. Of course, it, it it's important that you not only come up with the negative issues. Mm -hmm. You also have to if, if you complain about something, I expect that mm. you also can give a solution mm. how right. we get rid of. Yeah. 
that's actually one thing that is discussed that you need the psychological safety to yeah. be able to take risks and, and develop them further so mm. it's, a, it's a very good point um well then again um well well if you want to make uh diverse boards or syndicates you obviously need uh, networks that yeah. are diverse so yes. do you have any tips on actively diversifying your your sphere i i i i think also that starts with uh, inclusion and open-minded <laughs> and uh, uh, i have to admit that now in corona times it's not very easy to expand your networks because basically networks are built by meeting people uh, i i believe that we humans are still you know crowd people in the essence of our, our soul so uh, uh, in order to to uh, have a network and expand a network you need to meet people and the best way is of course to to to, to uh, participate in uh, networking events or uh, um, study tours preferably even such that those two to places that you've never been to like uh, i was my first time in shanghai i was uh, with boardman yeah. and uh, and uh, uh, that kind of trips even if you don't know at the moment that you will expand your network you will because for example during that trip i i met um, uh, she's a lady uh, in singapore <laughs> And she's one of the major food investors and has a huge fund in Singapore investing in food. And I would never have met her mm. if I would not have joined a uh, trip. Right. Sometimes you don't meet anyone new. But once you go on a networking, it's, so, it's also important. You feel, of course, most comfortable with people you know, and it's, mm. it's always nice to, to discuss with the, your friends. Mm. But you have to consciously make sure that you take you know that you're open and you take also the proactive step right. to to discuss with yeah. different persons the courage sometimes uh, yes and and uh, perhaps courage but but i, I think it's even more important i don't know if it's it's the same for men and women but 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 it's important not to feel uncomfortable if you are alone i think that that is the first mm -hmm. step mm -hmm. try to be then with yeah because it's easier to speak to new people if you are alone yeah i mean sure in a way sure. because that's otherwise you, you turn your back with to, to the yeah. others with your friend and then you have a lot to discuss yeah. and they no one feels that they can interrupt and they feel uncomfortable Indeed. and then it becomes the exclusion Indeed. So, so stay alone <laughs> 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 Oh, or yeah. let's say don't be afraid to be alone right that, that's the way we put it <laughs> <laughs> all right um well when diversifying your team one key point is recruiting mm -hmm. and we, we know that we um uh think we make rational uh decisions when recruiting but actually uh we tend to for instance uh refer those who are similar to ourselves mm -hmm. yes and uh, i i personally have experiences um, i have i have been recruiting volunteers and then uh, suddenly i have 12 names that are all similar mm -hmm. to my name mm -hmm. from a big uh, international pool and then i needed to check like okay this this bias is here so have you got similar experience yes yes i would wish that i could say that no but, but i definitely do and 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 uh, um that 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 really is a problem because it's um, not only that you tend to want to recruit uh, people like yourself, because of course one of the important thing in a, in a team is chemistry, and then you believe that if everyone is you know a little bit the same, then the chemistry is the best. But it doesn't have to be that way, and and I, I agree with you that that you have to do those choices uh, consciously. For example. I think if, if you're looking at the salesperson, mm -hmm. usually you think that the salesperson should be extrovert and talking a lot and, and you know, uh, they're kind of aggressive, I mean, it, in a positive way. Uh, but, but you do have salespersons also who are introvert, 
but they are really good in their way of warmly, you know, presenting their, you know, case and and uh, uh, giving also the, the the potential client the time to think and 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 tell what they want. So I would not say that you only have to have introverts or extroverts, but you should you should try to get them both. Then. Coming to the management, um, I I think that you should just uh, use professionals. It's uh, I, I'm not very good in recruiting. Well, I mean it's uh, it's mm -hmm. fine, but but yeah, you, you need the analysis because it's it's mm -hmm. it's really difficult in let's say one or two meetings or three meetings uh, to. Uh, uh, decide if the person is is good for the position and when you know that you tend to to recruit from your network and your network usually or those who you trust most are a little bit similar to yourself mm -hmm. true true um well um actually just yesterday i read an interesting blog from a danish a business angel who said that he has been actively trying to diversify his uh, portfolio and try to search for female founders and still he is in the situation that his portfolio is mainly the sort of all male panel and, and then he really honestly went through his um, uh, investing cases but have you tried kind of actively or, or you said you have a diverse diversity in your portfolio uh, have you actively tried to like? I want to have this or this amount of certain items. No, but I, I think that's a very good idea. I, you know, after this uh, morning discussion, I might go home and <laughs> and have a look at my portfolios, yeah. companies. Uh, I I had uh, uh, one. <laughs> I didn't get that far, but but one diversification I really did want. I wanted to have an investment outside Finland. And uh, uh, that was my decision or want. Uh, so, and, and then I invested in the Swedish company. I know Sweden is not that far away from Finland, but, but it's a first step. And uh, also in, in the future, I really want to look at uh, also non-Finnish companies. Yeah. But otherwise, I, I uh, um, in, in the gender aspect, it's, um, it's basically both. The, the reality is, though, that most of uh, the founders are uh, male, and you can't do anything about it. So, if you have uh, 100 companies, I would say that 90% is founded by males. So, what I wish uh, is that uh, uh, also females really, you know, consciously makes themselves to take the risk. Because that is the same with, the, with with everything else. Some, you, sometimes you have to to some issues that are difficult for you. You just have to talk to yourself and make yourself do them. Indeed, indeed. Great encouragement. Um, well, then uh, there's talk about diversity and inclusion, but sometimes the efforts fail to translate mm. uh, into action. So, what do you think? What would be the most important reasons why? Translate. So, so, uh, um, why do, do the um, efforts to, to build diversity fail? Well, I um, perhaps uh, uh, one is as, as you mentioned the blog. Perhaps uh, we are not that structured. We go by intuition, yeah. and uh, we don't do what I would say our analysis how we ourselves act, we, we kind of have a view how we would like to, but then in reality we don't do as we, we, we like to. And uh, then when you are, uh, you know, in front of the choice, it's, uh, it's not that easy to, to, you know, if you have two equal candidates, but the one is, let's say, have an international background and does not speak speak Finnish or Swedish uh, and then you have the equally uh, um, experienced person who is more like you 
Mm. Mm. It's, it's very easy to tell you that, well, they have the same experience. Let's take the one that I can speak my mother tongue. Yes, yeah, and, and I suppose it's consciousness again. Indeed. So that's the first step. Yeah. Building diversity. Recognize those and and to respect people. I I think also it's it's to to, to try to not fall into the, the the old ways. I I remember in one recruiting process uh, uh, we had a very good. Uh, I I think she was from I think she was from Poland, but it's it's some time ago. So so you had those you know thoughts how how people are uh, if they are uh, from Poland, and and in that person. It, just didn't fit it. What he, I think it was a she. Actually, she was very outgoing and proactive, intelligent in all ways. And then in the end, the reason for not choosing her was that well, she doesn't speak Finnish that well. Mm. She even spoke Finnish. Mm. And then we decided to to go with a Finnish speaking person. And that that is something I've been over the years thinking of. That why did we make that decision? She is from Poland, she was educated, she had even learned Finnish, but she had an accent. That's really interesting, really honest. Uh, yeah, and it's it's horrible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But maybe maybe this is the solution is, is still kind of going back to these situations. And yeah, about. and you have to learn from yeah. them. You have to, to, to really next time uh, you have to make a different decision. Right. Yeah. Maybe also can kind of take a risk in your Yes, exactly. Um, well, last but not least, how do you uh, estimate the, well, this this we have been talking already, uh, stage of diversity, but maybe most interestingly, uh, how do you estimate it to evolve? In years. Hmm. That's a good question. I uh, I wish that we as a country could be more open-minded and more inclusive. Uh, for for people with different backgrounds from different countries to, to feel at home. Uh, we have a tendency to, unfortunately, to do just as I, I, I told you. Um, we, we believe that you have to be Finnish speaking in order to work in Finland, but that's not the case anymore. And, and perhaps slowly it's changing. If you look at the international companies, they, uh, they speak English. Um, they are pretty international and uh, small steps, but we also have to, we, we have to make it easier to let non-Finnish persons move to Finland. I, I think that is the first step and encourage them to, we, we are known for our good education. We have to encourage them to study in Finland and you never know, perhaps they even stay. Mm, indeed, indeed. Good. Um, and it's interesting that the language seems to be so much a barrier since we still have like mm. one of Europe's best but, but you know, I, in English. Yes, but I, I believe it, this will change with, with the younger generation because uh, uh, you guys, you speak <laughs> fluently English and, and you have perhaps seen more of the world than, than my generation, I suppose. Mm. At least like if you look at the, like all of the young. Definitely. People. So Definitely. I, I, I have my hopes. Good. Great. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Saga. I think uh, now we could look at the Q and A's. So if we get um, Menti on screen again, so so if you go to the website and tap in the code one six eight eight two four. You can enter your question for Saga uh, there. And there we have already one question. Diversity means having a culture that houses. Ah, this might not be a question, but houses individuals from different backgrounds and allows all to sound their opinions without repercussions. Mm. That's, that's a good way to summarize it's true and it's it's a it's a good way and and i suppose again you have to listen and let yeah. others also tell what they or you have to have the atmosphere of of openness and that no opinion is wrong you just have opinions 
that creates psychological safety. As long as you always have a solution when you complain. Yeah. I think that is yeah. the, <laughs> the other side of it. Constructive. Constructive Just criticism. Indeed. Yes. Indeed. Do we get any questions? What is your prediction? Where will we stand on this topic in five years? Oh, I wish. <laughs> I, um, hmm. My, uh, well, I, I somehow I, I don't know, somehow I wish that uh, we would be a more open society. But uh, unfortunately, I think with the, the trends today, especially in the political uh, side, it's not very encouraging. And uh, also, if you look at that, I don't know, it's uh, I also if you look at, at how you feel about uh, you know, educated people who has a job coming to Finland, how difficult it is. And I, I believe in our structures in, in the authorities, unfortunately, mm. we have a lot to do. And so I, I, I'm not sure that we are very much further in five years. Maybe in 10 years. Maybe in 10 years, I hope. And now, now we even have the uh, corona epidemic and, and it kind of gives us allowance mm. to even close more and and you know people mm. from outside they might be hmm, infected you never know right and that's not maybe the the most uh welcoming no situation. no it's not <laughs> so so that's why i'm worried yeah well luckily we have good connections everywhere in other yeah mm. in the world uh what is your approach to understanding different cultural viewpoints mm. i suppose uh, uh the, the the best way I have always believed is travel. I, I've been traveling ever since I turned 18 quite a lot. Mm -hmm. So uh, so I believe that is the, uh, because then again, when you are alone or if you don't have to be necessarily alone when you travel, but, but, but when you are in a minority, mm -hmm. when you're a small group, mm -hmm. you are kind of forced to, uh, to adapt. To, to the other ways of, of the other people. So I, I, I think that is the, the basics for understanding. Of course, reading is another thing uh, to, to, because when you read, you, you know the inner thoughts of a person, which you never get if you just speak, you know, about the weather. <laughs> so those two, traveling and reading. It, it's actually said that reading uh, increases your empathy. With yeah, skills to get into another person's position. Um, let's see what else. How do you handle conflicts? Yes. Um, uh, I suppose uh, conflicts always have their kind of own life circle or, uh, or lifeline. Uh, it's you know, when, when the conflict starts, it's, it's uh, uh, you can't be constructive at that point. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so you, you, you need to first, I suppose, that usually it's two or three or four persons, you are never in conflict with yourself. So, uh, so uh, you, you have to get that out. And uh, uh, then I suppose you have to sit down and discuss it but not make any decisions, you know, the first discussion. Mm -hmm. Then everyone has to go home and sleep and think mm -hmm. about it, and then you have a new discussion. And, and I, I think the most important in conflicts is that you have, again, the open atmosphere, so that you understand what is the, 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 the real reason for, for the conflict discussion. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a great point that you need to give time to sleep over. Yeah, over it and, and then come back to it because you always make if you are if you are angry or if you are sad you always make wrong decisions. I I, I recognize this. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Let's see. Um, I think more important is cultural match and fit with company's values than mm. anything else. 
gender nor age nor Finnish language are not issues, at least in fast from digital firms. Agree. Yes, I I I actually do agree. It's, it's quite well said. You have to have the same values. But when you are looking for people with the same values, you kind of have to look through your own own prejudices. But I agree. And what are your views on diversity as a source of competitive advantage? Okay. Yeah. So uh, um, I think it's it's. Uh, it is a competitive advantage because if you are too similar, the dynamics of the company, the, the the new opportunities, you never catch them because you are all in your organization is basically looking at the same things, and and even I mean this is of course uh, obvious, but but if you think about exports and sales, if you have a person who is born let's say in Rwanda and you want to export to Rwanda. Of course, it's easier for such a person. Perhaps uh, that person has been studying in Finland and she is uh, fluent in all languages mm. or English, Finnish, and, and whatever. Mm. And these. <laughs> great, great point. Yeah. So it can really be a competitive advantage. Ah, yes, I work in a. I work in a male dominant workplace and my female colleague tells me after three years of working, she feels that there is, that is a boys club. What steps can I take to make the culture more inclusive? It's, um, I, I have all my life also worked in, in, in a male dominant workplace. It's uh, financing is, uh, is such. And, um, um I, I I think that well the my colleagues they are who I work most with in, in, in uh, mergers and acquisitions, they are both male, uh but but they are very inclusive, so so we've never had a problem there. But I, I, I see that point and I also uh, felt it. But I suppose uh I suppose you just um you know your friends are your friends. And uh, and don't I, I would say don't be envious if you kind of have the boys clubs if they go and you know go to the sauna they go play a game it's it's their way of being you know friends mm. but but of course if 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 they make any business oh, it's difficult you can't go to the sauna you you know you have to have your own friends mm. but you have to perhaps have a difference between you know your 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 work and business decisions, and then your private life. Mm -hmm. And the sauna goes to the private life. That goes to the private life. Mm -hmm. mm. But it, it's not that easy. I I uh, I don't quite have an answer. You just have to, you know, live with it. And you also the open discussion. Yeah. Which... And another thing is is quite interesting too because I I understand also that the worry behind there is that when when you have your 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 you know private life of course you also might discuss business and you discuss business on a different level it's more like on, on a mixed personal business level uh so so uh, but but you can't really do anything to that you can of course i, I do i'm friends also with my male uh, colleagues mm -hmm. so we we have we talk about family we talk about kids mm -hmm. And then we talk about business, mm -hmm. and then we talk about philosophy or whatever happens in the world. So, so in those are very you know equal in that way. But then I also have female friends uh, who are in in uh, pretty high positions, and uh, with those I also discuss you know life in all and um, you know whatever mm -hmm. crisis, age crisis you have. But then you also discuss business. Mm -hmm. So perhaps you have to just build up the network both like intergender and then with your own gender. Good, good answer. Ah, well, I don't know. <laughs> it's, okay. it's a difficult question. That was, that was good. Yeah. Point. Do we have any other questions? I think that's Excellent. all. Excellent questions. I have to say it's uh, very interesting. Yeah. 
and not easy. not very easy ones. Not easy ones, but that's as you said, this is not an easy. <laughs> no, no. Great, thank you for all 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 the questions. Um, then we could move on to see what's coming next on Fibon Morning Talk. So uh, in December, we have our managing director, Emil Gailey, and, and Fibon chair of the board, Reiva Linnamir, talking about check, uh, lead angel compensation. And in January, our um, investment analyst, Oscar Björklund, will be uh, opening up uh, impact behind the angel investment with, uh, with with his guest. So those are the coming coming session topics and and uh, stay tuned. Uh, follow our social media and newsletter to to get the information from our part. Thank you, Saga. Thank you. It was great being here. And thank you for all online. And see you next month. Have a great Thursday.